yes, we're all on a naughty Mike Tyson binge, and Uncle Proper is about to tell you what really happened. That fateful day, the day the infamous Mike Tyson was dethroned by the most memorable underdog in boxing history. Yes, James Buster Douglas. <laughs> Firstly, we need to rewind. Let me take you back to the Trevor Burbick fight. Mike was now world champion and his ability in the ring seemed to be unmatched. He was in sync with his trainer Kevin Rooney, the man who carried on the knowledge of the legendary Custom Marto after his passing. However, Mike also had just started working professionally with someone new on the business side of things. Now we've all got that one person in our lives, sometimes it's your uncle or some bloke from work. One of them fellas who is just a complete and utter fucking helmet, who you can't seem to get rid of. For Michael Tyson, that man was Don King. Big Don swooped into Tyson's career and landed him the Burbick fight. And then James Smith, and then Tony Tucker. Mike picked up all the belts from emphatically defeating these three opponents, making him undisputed champion of the world. He then topped it off with an incredible display in the richest fight in history against undefeated Michael Spinks. Everything was rosy. Or was it? No, it fucking wasn't. Amongst all this, Mike began a relationship with Robin Givens, which was about as successful as this bloke running a fucking marathon. Yes, the relationship was turbulent from the outset, and according to Bill Clayton, the man responsible for Tyson's promotion before Don King, Robin had a hold over Mike, the same hold that Don King had now manufactured by becoming his sole promoter. Clayton also stated that Don convinced Mike to get rid of Rooney for a throwaway comment that he made about Givens. Mike was unfazed by the comment at first, but Don worked him up into a friend saying no man should talk about another man's wife like that. So Mike took the drastic action to send Rooney packing. Mike now had a new team around him, created entirely by the spiky-haired bellend. Yes, Don's team. Now why is this important? Well, here's why. He went on to face our old mate Frank Bruno, crushing him by knockout. But Kevin Rooney and Custom Marto's peekaboo style that was so effective, the ferocious head movement and constant work rate was no longer apparent. Along with this, Mike's life outside of the ring was all over the place. But he still went on to produce another incredible knockout win against Carl Williams. And then there was a quick payday to be had before the mega fight with Evander Holyfield. He was off to Tokyo to face the relatively unknown known Buster Douglas. Tyson was now trained by Aaron Snow, and in the words of Aaron, he was uncooperative from the outset, refusing to train hard. Then things quickly began to look out of the ordinary when he was put down during sparring. Now the six foot four underdog Buster Douglas had been the polar opposite of this, training very hard for the fight of his life. The bookies barely accepted bets on the fight, but those who did place Buster's chances at a whopping 42 to one, and this was reflected in everyone else's opinion on how the fight would go. But then, just 23 days before the fight, Buster's dear old mother passed away at just 46 years old. This loss hit Buster very hard, but fueled his desire to win even more. He was now training with ferocious heart and passion, fighting for his family, fighting for his blood, and for the memory of the wonderful Lula Pell Douglas. Meanwhile, the baddest man on the planet was having a whale of a time. He went to watch a bit of basketball, he caught a few pigeons, and he went to the fucking zoo. I don't blame him though, I bloody love the zoo. It's absolutely terrific, isn't it? Yes, yeah, superb. Elephants, giraffes, monkeys, oh bloody hell. Sorry, anyway, yes, it looked as though he'd taken his eye off the ball, which became even more apparent the night before the bout. Now to air the fight at prime time in America, the pair were due to battle it out at 9 a.m. in the morning, meaning the fighters would most likely have to get up around 5 or 6 a.m. But Tyson's a proper bloke, and if there's one thing that proper blokes love, it's a session. He parted the night away with singer Bobby Brown, claiming to have had a threesome with maids and a carousel of ladies in and out of the room all night doing the dirty, ploughing through the lot, smashing the granny out of them. Yes, bosh, sorry. Allegedly saying that night to Bobby that I don't need to sleep to beat this man. He's not a problem. Yeah, I'll tell you what though, I've had nights like that, dozens of girls in and out of my room all night. It is pretty exhausting, I tell you. Honestly, I have. All right, I haven't, fuck you. Anyway, the time had come. Buster was in the ring double lively, looking very sprightly. Then Tyson walked in looking a little bit fucked. He was thinking, oh, I shouldn't have had all that sex. My bell end is proper stinging. So Douglas was due to earn his highest purse ever of $1.3 million, and Tyson was earning a cool $6 million. And then the fight began. But just before we get into that, you boxing fans out there, here's a little something you're gonna absolutely ruddy love. 
If you're a boxing fan and never want to miss a fight, Boxing Showtimes is the app you need. This is a professional boxing schedule in your pocket that keeps you up to date on what's going on in the world of boxing. Download now. Yes, love it. Get yourselves involved. Now it was time. Douglas was looking sharp and jabbing well using his 12-inch reach advantage. Tyson seemed slower than usual, lacking the spitefulness in his punch we had seen so often. Buster's main attribute that so many Tyson opponents never had was the fearlessness that he displayed, letting his punches fly, but equally measuring the distance and Tyson's movements very well, stopping him from getting in range by jabbing, throwing punches in bunches and tying him up. The dominance with the jab and the right hand caused Tyson so many problems, so much so that by the fourth round, his eye was busted up. Now in this situation, the cornerman would normally use an accessory called an on-swell, a steel press that reduces swelling around the eye, but Tyson's team, yeah, they, uh, they forgot this. Instead, they used a great big fucking condom, apparently. Sorry, no, it was actually a latex glove. Yes, it was a case of the team forgetting, but also thinking they wouldn't need one because Tyson was about to walk through this man. Yeah, that wasn't quite happening. I mean, bloody hell, who was in charge of employing this cheap amateur team? <laughs> oh yeah, this absolute turnip. Mike's demeanor was all wrong, already looking beaten by the sixth round. But then, Douglas got a bit cocky and received a lethal Tyson uppercut in the eighth round with 10 seconds left, sending him to the canvas. And there's a right hand uppercut and down goes Douglas. However, upon the count of nine, he had arisen. Yes, that's right, nine seconds. I'll come back to that in a minute. Tyson was intending to finish the job, but Buster was saved by the bell. The next round, Douglas had recovered and he was back on form, keeping Tyson at bay and breaking him down. Then, it was the historical 10th round, where Douglas finally found the sweet spot. That will finish things in. Oh, the uppercut! What an uppercut by Douglas, and down goes Tyson! Mike Tyson has said in recent interviews that he was completely dazed by the onslaught, but the biggest issue for him was putting his gum shield back in which was needed for the fight to carry on. The referee completed the count, with Tyson still all over the place. Douglas was now the champion. Now in the aftermath of the fight, Don King, who was not a happy man, ordered every member of the media to a press conference. He claimed that Buster's count was around 13 seconds and even counted it out aloud to prove it. He was actually right. However, the only count that matters under boxing rules is the referees, and Buster used his time to recover whilst acknowledging the referee's count. If it had been quicker, who's to say that he wouldn't have got up sooner? But on the flip side of this, something that Don failed to mention was that Tyson got the exact same count and was wobbling about like an old man's dangly pair of bollocks. In the following days, Don threatened legal action, and in Buster's words made it hell for him to enjoy his time as champion. The WBA and the WBC initially agreed with Don and suspended recognition of Douglas as champion, although the IBF accepted that the result was valid. After a public outcry and demands from boxing commissions all over the world, they acknowledged that Douglas was the champion. Finally, Don folded. He knew it was a losing battle. Douglas went on to fight Evander Holyfield and was obliterated in three rounds by the former cruiserweight champion. But Buster earned $24 million for this fight, so fuck it, I'd get knocked out for that. Tyson went on to fight four more times till his arrest in 1991. We'll save that story for another day. A lot has been said over the years about Tyson's team and his preparation for this historical fight, and had he been with his former camp and Don King out the picture, maybe it would have been a different story. But ultimately, Douglas beat the man in front of him, and he was a man with fire in his belly that day. He was fighting for the legacy of his dear mother that meant everything to him, so nothing should ever be taken away from him. He caused the greatest upset in the history of boxing through his sheer will and determination, and to this we say bloody fair play. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe and I'll see you triple soon. Bosh.